Okay, first proper vlog. First proper vlog. God, I made a mistake in the first sentence. <laughs> okay, welcome. Thanks so much for coming back after that long ten and a half minute intro. I had you sit through. Massive apologies for that again. Uh, the plan for today, like uh, I think I mentioned on social media earlier on, I was out at an Aston Martin garage seeing the launch of the new DB11, which was absolutely amazing. And I thought that I was actually going to be able to do this from inside one of the cars. Obviously not the DB11, the brand new one that they wouldn't even let me near, but maybe in one of the other ones. But it's got to go through their marketing department and all this crazy stuff, so I just left it. So I've actually come down to the avenues and I was all over the place inside trying to find somewhere that looked as if it was a kind of Kuwait backdrop. So I've managed to get a palm tree, some Arabic IKEA, and the sun setting, I mean, is that enough? <laughs> I'll really try harder for the next one. Um, so today, uh, the response to the intro that I put up has just been unbelievable. Um, it's so funny over the last two years, I feel as if my head's just been down concentrating and getting this business set up and getting everything done and getting a team built and getting out here and getting all this stuff done. Actually, when you stick your head above water and, and realise kind of how far you've came and and how many different people you've met along that journey. It's, it's, it's really amazing to kind of take stock of that. So I spoke before about how I wanted to do a vlog to encourage other people to set up their own businesses. And I think the easiest way to do that would be to take you right back to the start. And this week I want to talk about the risk of setting up when the tipping point comes where the, the bigger risk is to not do it um, in terms of where you are in your personal life and, and what you're going through. Um, and to give you a bit of a story about, about how I've done it, which is by no means a blueprint for success. Uh, I should probably put that as a disclaimer right now because I genuinely believe that if I, did, if I made all those choices again, it might not have turned out. There's been a certain element of luck in it. Hard work has absolutely won the day. Uh, you know, hustle, which is such an American word, but it's really that we don't really have a word in the English language for hustle. It's kind of like blagging it kind of you know but yeah it's been hustle hard work but a teeny bit of luck and I think that's in, that's where the timing is so important so you've got to make sure that the timing is right for you I'm going to take you right back to 2013 when I was working in a job that I will probably say that I hated but at the time I did actually love parts of it I loved the people that I worked with I liked the the stability of having weekends off, I uh, like the security of knowing that I was going to get paid at the end of the month so that I could pay my bills and I quite liked my holidays. So for me those were perks and I can quite imagine that a lot of people watching this would be in the same boat where that really is a perk and I was conned into the belief through working over years and years that this was the only way to go. I hadn't any idea of setting up one business, I didn't even think about it, I mean how could I still go out and party at the weekend if I had my own business? You know, it was just these daft things that was the short-sighted thinking. Um, I was just interested in going out, having fun, earning a good wage. But at the same time, I was absolutely 100% focused on my career. I mean, I was a worker. I was always a worker. I always had jobs at the weekend. I always had um, part-time jobs. There was one point where I was working my main job during the week. I would finish at five. I would go home for a sleep. And then I would get ready and I would go to night shift in Primark, uh, stacking shelves with pyjamas. And then the next day I would sleep and then do another night shift on the Saturday night. So I was always working. I think the point came for me when I just felt as if the work I was doing was, wasn't challenging me. The people I was working with, while I loved them and you know they were, they were great people, the, the, the benefits that they were feeling of that job were things that I, I didn't... I didn't have anything to do with me. For example, working in the civil service, one of the great benefits is maternity pay, and I wasn't planning on having any children. Another great benefit is the pension, and I don't want to start thinking about my pension when I'm 31. I still don't want to think about it when I'm nearly 34. So there's all these benefits, which to people with a family and to people who are thinking of starting a family are fantastic benefits, but to me it just didn't cut it. And that's when I started looking for something else. And I'll talk more about the risks I took and the, and the steps that I, that I took during the week, but I suppose I want to give you just a short, sharp kind of takeaway from today. I knew I was ready when I was sitting watching stuff on YouTube about people who had set up their own businesses and about people who were motivating me to do something. 
and as I say, I still didn't know that it was going to be a business I set up. I just knew that I wanted to be more like them than like the me that I currently was. And when I spoke to people around me, and I spoke to my friends, and I spoke to my colleagues about how miserable I was feeling, they totally got it. Do you know what I mean? They weren't as miserable as me. It was it was something in me that I knew I had to change. If you were waking up every single morning and you're dreading the alarm and you're putting it in snooze 15 times and you're getting up and you're you're wishing that you were sick like you're feeling like oh god I got a sore throat like does my throat look red maybe I could take a deal maybe I need a deal if that's you it's time like I guarantee you it's absolutely 100% time it's probably past time um the the big clincher for me was I had applied for a couple of promotions in my work and didn't get them but I don't think I was annoyed about not getting the promotions and that I wasn't getting to do the work. I was annoyed at the <laughs> how much I wanted a job that I didn't really want. And I think that's when I realised, you know, when I got so upset about not getting it, I wasn't upset about not getting that particular job. I was upset because I wasn't even good enough for a job I didn't like. And I think that's the point where I realised that I was going to fail at a job I hated. And there is nothing worse in the world than feeling it's something that you don't even want to achieve. So I think that was the stage where I thought, well, do you know what? I'm just going to try feeling at something bigger. I'm going to try feeling at something that I really want to do. And at least then if I fail, I'm probably still going to be further ahead than, than where I was. So that was the decision making for me. That's what made me make the decision. And what I'm going to talk to you about tomorrow, in hopefully a, a bit of a more Kuwaiti setting, maybe a couple more pantries, maybe a couple more sunsets, probably no Ikea, sorry Ikea. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about tomorrow is the process, the oh shit process I call it, sorry, don't tune in tomorrow if you don't like the word shit, it's that feeling of I know I need to do this, I know now's the right time, I know I'm going to go for it, what the hell do I do now? So I've already went over my five minutes that I promised you I was going to stick to, most of that was just gibbering about where I'm sitting. Have a great night everybody, I'm so excited about this vlog, I'm so excited about being able to speak to you every single day <laughs> and I will chat to you tomorrow okay <laughs> take it easy